1031 exchange. What is 1031 exchange? Oh gosh, you can go crazy if you really don't know. It sounds very enticing to do those kind of things deferring the capital gain taxes, but who really qualifies for that? How is it being done? Can you do it? Who can do it? What's the process? What are the timelines? And the most important part that you need to know is what happens if you're not able to buy a property within that time that's given to you, what happens then? I didn't know that until I asked a good friend of mine, David Traster, who's an attorney, who does real estate, family law, trusts, wills, sales, 1031 exchanges, divorces. I have all of these videos that I did interviews with him on my channel. You can watch that later. So I have David here today. He was very nice to come and sit with me and answer all of these important questions. Welcome, David. David, can you enlighten us a little bit? Because you can't just sell a property and say, well, I want to do a 1031 exchange, but you know, I'll do it in five years or in two years or in even one year. So there are, there are time limits to these kind of things. And I think it would be best if you tell us about the time limits. <laughs> so, so I'll be happy to do that. Yeah. Uh, so what is a 1031 exchange? First of all, a 1031 exchange is a process that exists in the IRS code that allows you to avoid paying capital gains tax. And when people Google avoid capital Don't gains... Don't say avoid, it's deferred. Deferred. <laughs> uh, when people type in, you know, ta capital gains tax, sale of a home, they'll see mm -hmm. pop-ups for 1031. And a lot of times we'll get calls, hey, I just sold my house, I want to do a 1031 exchange. Well, it's too late at that yeah. point. Uh, 1031 exchange is a is a special process that exists only for uh, investment properties. So it doesn't exist for your primary home. Correct. Uh, the other part of it is that uh, the entire concept of a 1031 exchange is you taking one investment property and you're changing it for another investment property. In this way, the tax is deferred. Uh, and you don't have to pay it when you sell as you would on a regular capital gains tax for a regular investment property. Uh, so how is it done? Uh, there's intermediaries involved. At an inter what is an intermediary? There are companies that are just authorized by the IRS to do 1031 exchanges. And what do they really do? They just keep money. That, 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 yeah. that, they just keep your money. It's like money. an escrow. It's an cheaper. escrow. Yeah. So basically, you would sell one investment property, and this intermediate, it, the money wouldn't go to you. It wouldn't go to your lawyer. It wouldn't go to anybody. It would go to this third party intermediary that would keep the money until you uh, locate another property that you want to invest in. And then when you need to purchase that property at closing, they're the ones who transfer the money to the seller of that property. And a couple of things to note uh, when they are uh, during these 1031 exchanges is that uh, generally you have to do this ahead of time because you need to find this interme intermediary. You need to find this company that's going to hold the money for you. The other part of it is that after you uh, there's, you're, you're constrained by certain time limits. After you sell the property, you have 45 days to locate a new property that you want to identify. Invest, identify, which they call right? It, yes. And you could identify up to three properties. Okay. So you don't need to buy all three as long as you close on one of the three. But you only have 45 days to identify one and you have six months to close on the purchase. Okay, so I wanna really dig into this identify stuff because identify meaning, okay, I'll, let's say, as a 1031 exchange investor who's doing that, for example, am I gonna say, okay, well, here's the three properties that I'm planning on buying, or do I have to have a contract or an offer of acceptance? You do not need to have a contract okay. or an offer of acceptance. You just need to identify it to the third party intermediary. Who, oh, which one of these properties are you gonna be buying? And okay. then you go into and you negotiate. Maybe one you get a better luck with and you get it 
uh, and you decide that's Whichever the one Whichever one out of you. three. But right. what happens if you don't get a deal on neither one of them? What happens then? then Not the, by a fault of your own. I mean, you tried, you made offers, right. maybe somebody beat you and things like that. What happens? So then the money is dis disbursed back to you. Oh, now you're done. You have to pay the but capital gains. But now you have to pay the oh, capital gains. Oh, boy. <laughs> so. IRS loves getting oh. their money. They will make it very hard for you to keep that money from them. So that's interesting because now it makes me think that, and I have my, my realtor hat on right now, and now it makes me feel like, okay, so is it, what's it doing if, if, if a realtor presents an offer for his investor and says, well, we're doing a 1031 exchange. Now, if the other party is smart enough, knowledgeable enough, they say, okay, well, they have to identify and buy something or I'm not reducing, I'm not giving credits, I'm not doing this because now they have to pay whatever because then they have that problem. Right. Interesting. So that's, that's a very good point and it's, I'm sure it certainly comes into play. But in the end, look, you know, you know better than anyone. When, you know, the best thing is when people want to sell and there's someone that wants to buy. And that usually gets worked out. Yeah, true. <laughs> Anyway, so I want to say that um, it's, uh, there's a lot to learn about all of these things. And of course, if you have specific questions, you can email your questions to keeping it real with a sphere at gmail.com. If it's a question for David, um, I'll pass over the questions to him. If it's a question to me, excellent, I'll answer them. I know this information was extremely valuable. I know that you can't get information like that for free unless you hire somebody and get consultation. So I'm so grateful to have a friend like David who's willing to come and get interviewed because I like to ask him all the questions that you guys, my clients, and the community wants to know. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to like this video, share it with anybody that you think is gonna benefit from this video. And also click on the notification bell because you don't wanna miss any videos that pop up on this channel. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.